so the last time I read this book, we were talking about what the set point is. So, and saying that there's no magical formula to check what your set point is. So, are you above your set point? Wondering if you're above your own set point? Then answer these questions. Do you have difficulty recognizing when you're hungry and when you've had enough? Do you routinely eat beyond a comfortable level of fullness and feel lethargic, stuffed, and uncomfortable after meals? Do you go through periods where you eat out of control, anticipating that you will soon start to diet? Do you skip meals in an effort to lose weight, then overeat because you are hungry? Do you skip meals to save up for a big feast? Do you often eat as a coping mechanism? Do you often feel guilty about some of the foods or the amount of food you've eaten? If you overeat, do you figure you've blown your diet and end up eating even more? Do you often eat quickly without taking the time to focus on the taste of your food or to savor and enjoy it? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are likely above your set point. Don't feel bad. Most people aren't at their set point. This book will help you find it. Had to get a little more comfortable. There we go. So, are you below your soft point, your set point? Some people are chronically below their set point. But you'll know this is if you are often cold, you feel like you're completely preoccupied with food, and often feel desperately hungry. You wake up with an overwhelming urge to eat. You have difficulty sleeping because of gnawing hunger. You have a very low sex drive. For females, if you have infrequent periods or skip them entirely, you suffer from any of the following. Apathy, fatigue, irritability, and or depression. If you are below your set point, learning how to respond to your body's signals will help you to normalize your eating habits and feel better. It may result in a slight weight gain, but this is a good thing, I assure you. Warning. Many of these conditions may also be symptomatic of an eating disorder, a thyroid dysfunction, or other concerns. Be sure to discuss these symptoms with a trusted health professional. Achieve your set point. This book is going to help you get to your natural set point, the weight that is healthiest for you. By the end of the book, you'll be answering yes to these questions. Do you eat naturally in response to signals of hunger? fullness, and appetite without fixating on your weight or food habits. Is eating effortless and enjoyable? Soon your body will be guiding you in making nutritious, pleasurable choices. No more counting calories, totaling fat grams, or weighing broiled skinless chicken breast. So that was actually the end of chapter one. Uh, so we're, the chapter two is we're emotionally starved. Okay, so you know you have an internal weight regulation system that is predisposed for maintaining your individual body weight set point. If it's so powerful, you're wondering, how come your waistlines have been expanding over the last few decades? Two reasons. First, we no longer allow the process to work. We don't trust our own judgment anymore. External rules such as belief systems about good foods, bad foods, appropriate amounts of times to eat, drown out our innate ability to respond to set point cues. We eat not because we're hungry, but because we're sad, guilty, bored, frustrated, lonely, or angry. Because food can't take care of our emotions, we eat and we eat and never feel satisfied. We'll tackle these topics in this chapter. Another part of the deal is that we're physically hungrier due to rising set points. The result of changing lifestyle choices, how we live our lives, and what we do eat do matter. These are weighty topics that deserve their own chapters. So, what drives your hunger? Have you ever thought about why you eat? Sure, sure. Part of the reason is because your stomach is growling and that steaming bowl of pasta with marinara sauce is making your mouth water. Imagine traveling back millions of years ago to pose this question to Nate the Neanderthal. Why eat? I eat to survive, dummy. Now pass me that bison leg and quit bothering me with such silly questions. Without the distractions of modern life, Nate is able to home in on the, want the simple but profound answer to our question. An answer that often eludes us post-Neanderthals. The most basic reason we eat is to provide fuel for our bodies. Without food, Obviously, we die. In fact, hunger is at the foundation of our biological programming. 
that ensures our suffer survival as a species. Every cell in our bodies is so invested in making sure we eat and provide fuel that not only are our bodies designed to make us feel miserable when we're hungry, but they also are designed to reward us when we do eat, triggering pleasure centers in our brains that make us act the act of eating so much more appealing than simply stuffing our mouths. This pleasure is our reward for listening to our body signals, and it plays an important role in the set point mechanism. If only hunger and eating remained that simple. Today, few of us view food as a means of fueling our bodies, nor is it a source of true pleasure for many of us. In fact, the pleasure we get from eating is too often viewed as indulgent or sinful, rather than as valuable support for nourishing ourselves. We've learned to deny our or control our hunger rather than honor and celebrate it. As you already know from the first chapter, denying your hunger doesn't lead to the weight loss or better health. And eating when you're hungry won't make you fat. In fact, the opposite is true. Eating when you're hungry helps maintain your set point and keep you at the weight that's right for you. And denying your hunger leads to compensatory mechanisms that trigger fat storage and weight gain. Yet today there's simply too much noise around the issue of food, hunger, and eating for us to listen to our own bodies. We live in a world that's dedicated to define food as good or bad. A world that encourages us to ignore our hunger and fullness signals in favor of continually seeking out the holy grail of thinness or to use food to fill needs that have nothing to do with sustenance. Sorry. If you don't trust to respond to hunger after a while, the self-regulatory set point mechanism that controls your fat stores breaks down. You weaken your innate ability to hear your hunger and fulfill signals. When this happens, you start to gain weight. No ideas you, you or anyone else may have about how to maintain a healthy and appropriate weight can be as effective as listening to your body. Losing weight is not about finding the perfect proportions of carbohydrates, protein, and fat to trickle yourself into feeling satisfied. Rather, maintaining the right weight for you is about respecting your hunger and trusting your body to guide you in doing what's best. And that's hard to do if you're regularly eating for reasons other than hunger and making choices that don't give you pleasure. As you continue reading, you'll come to understand how we often try to nourish ourselves emotionally with food. See if you recognize yourself in these pages. Perhaps it can help you become more conscious about why you, you crave donuts. So, to sum up, basically, this goes over emotional eating and, like, Oh, sometimes we eat when we're happy because we are going out with friends and it's just a natural thing. Oh, I'm going to celebrate, so let's go out to eat. We eat when we're depressed. It's, I'm in this situation and I can't deal with it right now, but I can control eating. So, it goes on to, are you a restrained eater? So, what kind of eater are you? Restrained or unrestrained? To find out, they have a little agree thing where you can strongly agree with it, each of the things um, and then leave a score based off of one to five where you strongly disagree to strongly agree on finding out you know where you are on that scale um, I've been working on this for years so it was interesting to see where I follow <coughs> so the scale was actually developed by researchers and has been used in many studies that examine people's eating habits. To help make sure you didn't bias your results based off what you thought you should respond, the questions were set up 
so that agreeing with some indicate that you were a restrained eater and agreeing with others indicated the opposite. So low scores in some of the columns do that. So mine was... Pretty high score for this book. So then it goes on to the danger of restrained eating. And then becoming an unrestrained eater. So I hear you, I hear you. I want to know how you became an unrestrained eater. Be patient. Chapter 9 will guide you in learning how to hear your body's signals of hunger and fullness. And finding new ways to address these emotional issues that once drove you to the refrigerator. The next few chapters help you understand the stumbling blocks. How we got here. And why your set point, set point dial is set where it's at. <coughs> so three we get into chapter three we get into we resist weight loss so are you still looking for the right diet or exercise plan to help you permanently lose weight it may be hard to believe that there isn't just there just isn't scientific evidence to support any theory of how to lose weight and keep it off no matter how many times or how authoritatively the message is repeated that diet, exercise, and discipline can get you what you want, it doesn't change the fact that it's not proven true for any but a tiny poor minority of population. This chapter examines why dieting backfires, why exercise fails to deliver on its weight loss promises, and how sleep habits and how you can manage stress complicated weight regulations. So, as we've already heard, how your hormones can do with this, and why dieting backfires, exercise fails to deliver on its weight loss promises. So, as I said, I'm not going to really get in, into it, but it's nice to know, like... The goal here, I guess... They also have things about selling, about some of the weight loss treatments um, and pills and stuff that so like some of the things is like bariatric surgery and stuff like that. And then it goes into chapter 4 which is stating we're eternally hungry. And how, you know, a lot of health stuff I've gone over on this channel. And then I have a nice little quiz on here on is it good food or bad food? And that it all depends. Eating, is eating that Twinkie really good or bad? It all depends on how frequently you eat it, how much you eat, what else you eat with it, whether you're attentive to it. So they came up with a healthy little thing. This is how your eating habits drive your set point. So they have a list of like how often do you drink sodas and fruit juices? How often do you eat snacks? How often do you have canned or frozen fruits? Added sugar, candy, jelly, refined beans, bread. That kind of stuff. And then you can check for your fiber. And it shows you how you can check for fiber in different foods. And figure out what the number means. It has the same thing for fat consumption. Have you help you figure out how much fat you're getting from different sources. Eating and activity habits. So if you diet or to watch your calories. Skip breakfast. Accumulate aerobic exercise. It tells more than 30 minutes a day. <sighs> that's all it kind of goes over it's, as I said a really good book I suggest getting it it's got some interesting facts in there um, 
I've already read it through completely once.